Oh, hey everyone, Denver with OBS Solutions. Well, tonight, people, we are gonna talk about, yeah, your wiring. Like, we see it all, like people using like household wire nuts to hold our 12-volt system together. Now, we're gonna go over our tips and tricks that we've learned over the years that works for us that helps our 12-volt system stay together, stays reliable, no fires, all that wonderful stuff. Follow along, people, it should be a rad time. All right, people, there's a lot of ways that we can join two wires together. I don't know, this would be not one of them, though. A household wire nut does not fly with us. And the reason being is a household wire nut is meant for a house or a mobile home, if you will, right, Kenny? Yeah, one that doesn't move a lot. There you go. Uh, wire nuts aren't meant to be, uh, they're meant, not meant for vibration. They are also not friendly when it comes to moisture because you can't seal them. Now, the other one we see a lot is our typical scotch lock. And like, hey, this works in a pinch, but the problem with the scotch lock is if you ever used one of these guys, they don't like to carry the current for very long because it's just a blade that pierces the insulation. And so when it comes to like your window motors and stuff like that, that has a lot of draw through it, these guys will not work. Actually, they'll get hot and start melting this plastic around there. We see that a lot as well. And the classic butt connector. Butt connectors are, here's a big one here so you can understand what it is, right? These guys will get you out of pinch. You should carry something like this in your truck if you're going off-roading or camping like that. They work, they do, but they're not permanent. And the problem is, when we go to crimp these guys, it's hard to tell if I got the wire far enough in, I crimp it, it kind of smashes it, it doesn't make it permanent. And a lot of times, they're, they come apart like this, and you can't seal them as well from moisture. How we roll is we like to do a simple, uh, we use a butt connector that we can solder, and then we heat shrink it so that it seals it all up. Now we're gonna show you guys how we do that, Come on, let's go. All right, tools for the job, they're basic people. We're not splitting atoms or curing cancer. A basic set of wire strippers is, I just like them, I like the combo set. Uh, Why don't you, like, you can use separate ones because sometimes those are a pain in the butt when you're uh, trying to strip a wire and it's in a tight spot like under they, the dash. They do suck when, it's t when you have to do that. But I like these guys here. You can use it horizontal like this, easy to get on the dash. I like these guys. I just like having one tool that does everything. Maybe I'm kind of lazy. Um, I'm also gonna use, because we're soldering, I also like to use a torch. And I only use this if there's obviously enough real estate. I will also use one of these guys, just a simple soldering iron. Now this is a bougie one that's like that's electric. Um, a simple plug-in one works really well as, uh, to do the job. And for the shrink tubing, I will use a heat gun. Um, your wife's hair dryer will work on high if you really want to do that. Or you can use a torch if you have some real estate to do the shrink tubing. Um, now when it comes to the process, we use a rosin core solder. We're gonna use a solderable butt connector and simple shrink tubing that you can find at any good parts store. So we're gonna make now this connection. Along. We're gonna show you how. Now this tool right here, uh, actually my dad made this for me, but you could find something like this at a lot of your RC car shops or electrical shops like that probably on the Amazon. We used to have Radio Shack, remember that, Kenny? Oh yeah, you that get, was a good spot. Right, but we don't care about that. We are gonna, this works really well though, something like this to just hold a wire for you to work. Even if it's, like I said, under the dash, which is the worst area for us to work, something like this, I'll just put it underneath there, it'll hold the wire, I can work on it. Or, if I don't have room for that guy, I'll use, what do we call these, Kenny? Forceps. Forceps, you can find them on Amazon as well. These ones are a little bougie, but you can actually just put it like this, and it holds the wire you want. You can then work with one hand, solder right here. These things are rad, very handy. All right, so the process, people, is really simple. Now, I'm gonna move this out of the way. Bear with me here if we're a little rough on this job, but I'm gonna strip these guys back. I'll use the proper wire size on the stripper. We don't have to be, I'll give it a little twist like so. Same thing with this guy. Now, real quick though, Kenny, did you know you can just solder these together without having a butt connector? Sure. Now, the reason we bring that up is because some people will just splice these two wires together like this, intertwine them, twist them, solder them, put some shrink tubing on it or whatever. That's, that's perfectly fine. The reason we're using a soldered butt connector is because sometimes it's a real pain to do that. And we like to make it so we can at least get the job done properly. I'm gonna take this here. Can you see that, Kenny? Barely, let me focus on that. Can you get that guy? Oh, that's nice. Yeah, so your good part stores will have these as well. I'm gonna put them here in the crimping style of my, or part of my tool. I'm gonna then go in here and just apply, get that side. Now, give it a little love. Real quick though, make sure you're using the right uh, size crimp uh, butt connector to the right size wire. You don't wanna make it so it it's a bigger wire with a smaller uh, butt connector and you're 
wires are all over the place. Just make sure you use the right size. So you can see that, Kenny. Yes, oh, no? Oh yeah, I can see it. All right. This focus close back thing's kind of throwing me off. Now, now we're gonna do the shrink tubing. This is one that really messes up people and has myself at times. Make sure I'm gonna put my shrink tubing on before I make the connection. Kenny, have you ever messed that up? Never. Yeah, no one ever does that. Never forget the heat I'm gonna put the shrink tubing on. I'm gonna then make sure this guy's nice and tight. Here's where it's there and there. I'm gonna put this together like so, so everyone can see it. Oop, oh. it came out. Actually, it's even easier, people. I just go like this. I'm gonna go. How are you doing camera? Okay, crimp it. We're good to go. Decent. All right, then we're crimped. I got my shrink tubing on. I made sure I didn't mess that up, which I've done that before. Now I'm gonna put some solder to this guy. Now we're using a rosin core solder, has flux already in it, really simple. I'm gonna use the lovely torch on this one just cause it makes this process speed up. I'm gonna heat this connector up and you're gonna start seeing it kind of turn a little bit. And then I just, there it goes. And I'm just gonna kiss it a little bit, like kissing your sister. Like that, Tim Conahan right there. Slide that guy over. Oh, I, I make sure. If it would have stuck. I'm gonna make sure that I got it even on both sides, and I'll take my torch, give it a little bit of love. And like I said, you can use the heat gun on this. You don't have to use a torch. I'm just using this to kind of speed up the process. You can also, if you Matco actually sells these really cool electric ones I showed you guys, they have a. Um, you can unscrew this. It has a little coil, and you can use that to heat it up as well. Um, that way, you're not having an open flame. But that's it. Really simple, not that complicated. Doesn't take a lot of solder. I just give it enough that it kind of draws the solder in, makes the connections, and you can look, this actually has a gel in it, so it seals it. You see that, Kenny, can you get in there? Oh, maybe, let me really try, it's blurry. You get it now? No, I can't. It's, anyway, it's you Android take, phone sucks. take my word for it. Kenny's around a potato phone, but um, anyway, that's how we do it, people. We're not experts, we just know what works for us. And this is actually a foolproof way to make a connection in a 12 volt system. Um, anyway. Hope you guys like this uh, little tick, uh, tech tip Tuesday. Is that right, Kenny? Or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's one of these days. Uh, enjoy. Love your comments. And uh, if you guys have other, I don't know, videos you want us to do on tech stuff that we might have done before, we might know something about, let us know. It's not as hard as you think it is. It could be, but we try to make it look easy. Thanks, guys.